right, guys, back in the booth on Sunday morning. Gonna get some painting done. Today, we're actually gonna do the smaller of the S cranks. I believe it's the 1.2. And the pattern we're gonna do it in, we're gonna do it in this one right here. This is a transparent bluegill. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And like I said, it is a 1.2. It's the smaller of the two S cranks. I've already started with two coats of auto born sealer transparent i always like to put something on when i'm doing a transparent bait i don't just spray straight to the blank so i do put a couple coats of sealer on it let it dry so what we're going to do first we're actually going to be using some 3d stencils and we're going to use some insane custom stencils on this so what we're going to do is i'm going to take this off and set it down we're going to remove this so I can get in here and and I know, like I said, if you haven't seen a 3D stencil, this is what I'm talking about. It actually fits over the bait. But in this case, I'm just gonna use half at a time because this is actually the 3D stencil for this, it's bigger brother, but it actually works on this. You can actually see it fits in there just about perfect. And I'm going to just use it very carefully to get my lines. And I've already pre-mixed my paint. I've actually pre-mixed a uh, Createx Illustrations Yellow with a Lemon Candy with some UVLS. And we're going to make our rim bars yellow on this one. So we're going to load the gun up. Set this over to the side. I had a lot of questions about what I'm doing right here. This is actually just a little small Tupperware container with um, cut up sponges and alcohol. I use it for my dry tip. I find it easier to do that than I do just picking it out with my hands. It just keeps it cleaner. I can just keep going without even really touching it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do something a little different. I'm going to show you how I would do it with it. I'm going to go ahead and put it all together and I'm going to clamp it. Then if you have questions about that, you'll know how to do it. Even though it's not the same size, it still sits in there relatively really good. So that's what it would look like if it was clamped. I get the little clamps at Dollar Tree. So they're pretty inexpensive. And what I'll do is, then I can just kind of hold it up a little bit, which I like to do that anyway. So this would probably be a good idea. And what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm on about, uh, about 15 pounds. I'm gonna start heavier on the top and just kind of let it fade down the lines. I'll hit it a couple times on that. Then I'll let it just go down. They're gonna be faint. Like I said, it's transparent anyway. But I found if you if you spray or on if you spray on lower pressure with this, you won't blow paint under the stencil when you're doing it. And that's that's a big deal because you don't want the bars to be spread out real thick. You want them kind of thin and more natural looking. Like I said, you just want to get a just get a low. I don't want them super super dark. And I'll let that dry for a minute. We'll check it. The good thing about it is, if you take it off and it's not where you want it, you just put it back into 3D stencil and it's pretty good. And like I said, the little clamps are very inexpensive. I the 3D stencils I get from Carry at Backwater Outfitters, or you can get them at Cedar Run. So we'll take that off. And they're very faint. I don't know if you can see those, but that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for something that's gonna be, you know, super, super dark. So that turned out good. Just, just some lines. So I can still have the transparency between them. So what I'll do is I'm gonna set that down. I'm gonna put my stand back up. 
And what I've already done, I've already mixed some iridescent electric blue, 4356. And I mixed some Candy 2O Carob with some UVLS. And on this, I did put a little 4011 reducer in this. just a little bit and what I'm gonna do is I got to clean my gun out real quick and I'm gonna put a little bit of that blue on the top and then we'll put some fins in the brim here on this and I'll show you how I do that with insane custom stencils like I said Russ has a great variety of stencils it's great to deal with great service you won't find a better guy i know i repeat that a lot but it couldn't it couldn't be more of the truth with him he is just a solid guy so what we're going to do that's pretty much dry we can hit it with the brush just to dry it off a little bit i didn't paint that much i want it so i know it's going to be dry like I said, I did a mixture of paint. I do that some. I mean, that's something you need to try, especially with your pearls and your sparkle lessons and your iridescence. Mix some candy in with it, and, uh, and you'll be surprised with some of the results you'll get. Very cool paints. And those, like I said, those are Auto Air and Candy 2.0. Give this a little check. And what I'm gonna do here is I got, like I said, I've still got it on about 15. All I'm wanting to do is just get a little bit of blue on this top. And really on the blue, I mean, instead of me just spraying Candy 2.0 straight to it, I want it, a, I want the top a little more solid. I know it looks really transparent on here and I'm gonna have to put a few coats on this. But it's gonna have a really cool look. And what I may do is let this dry to just kind of let that dry for a minute. We may just shoot some straight at the end after this dries. I may put some straight uh, electric blue iridescent on the top of that because I do. I want it solid. I want it to be totally covered up because your bottom is going to be transparent. Your sides are pretty much going to be transparent. And it gives it a really cool look, especially after you put your epoxy or your KBS, whatever your choice is on what you do. So I'm gonna put some of this back in here until it dries. Clean the gun out. Put me a little black in, and we'll go ahead and start doing some of the detail work on this. Like I said, this is not a, this is a, this is an easy pattern to do. I know it'll catch fish. Dry this off a little bit. Like I said, it's it's gonna need a little heavier paint on this top, a, more of a opaque. And I, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it with that. Probably should have done that first. I thought it was gonna be a little bit darker than that. So we'll let that dry really good. And then we'll come back and finish that off. Let me hit that with the heat gun. I'm gonna, well, I got some candy and I'll let that dry. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is I have a thin wheel number one. This was the actual original one he came out with and I like that one. And I'm actually going to use the bluegill wheel one on this. I don't want to get up in that top where it's going to get wet. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this over where you can try to get you to see it a little bit better. And I'm going to put a little bit of black in my gun. And I'm not going to cover 
on this stencil, when I set it on there, I'm not gonna cover. I'm just gonna take it and run it around just the outside of this fin, because I just want, I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna cover it all the way. Like I said, it is a transparent bait. And there's one fin I just use a lot I like, and it's this one. I just kind of go to the bottom half of the gill plate. I just slide it over. Wrong one. And I set it on. I try to get it flat. Like I said, you don't want paint blowing up under it. And there you go. It's not hard to do. Like I said, it's just... It's just a matter of getting um, control of your airbrush, and you'll do that. Like I said, just just get used to painting on some lower pressure when you're doing these stencils. I think you'll have better results. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this this bluegill wheel. It's actually already got points set up on it for this. Now this I will paint solid black because I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna put a little bit of white in here with it. And that we're gonna to have to let dry. I do want that a little bit darker. Now we're gonna to have to do this upside down, which I'm getting used to this. We'll go back to the fin wheel. I usually don't, I usually take this off and I set it down, but like I said, I'm trying to get it where you can see it a little bit. So I go to the bottom of the gill plate, just set it, oh, wrong one, bottom of the gill plate and I'll set it over. And all you wanna do is hit the outside of the stencil. Not trying to do the middle, because I'm gonna put a little bit of white in there just for and it comes out pretty good. And then, like I said, we'll slide this down just a tad. I'm going to, have to put this one up a little high. I made that, I made that a little bit higher than what I wanted to do. I should have put that down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it up just a little bit. Darken it up, take it off, and we'll let that dry for a second. Let that dry. I am going to put a little bit of black around the eyes on this one. I think I had that on the other one. Just put a little bit of black around these eyes. Didn't modify these eyes. These are actually gonna be a six millimeter eye that I really, really like. Um, they got a really good look to them. They match this bait really well. So let's clean the gun out. Get that black out of the gun. Then we're gonna shoot a little bit of white. And kind of give these fins and Brim here's a little bit of detail on this transparent bait. So the white I'm gonna be using is just regular old, I, I'll be honest, I like the, when I'm doing stencils, I like to use a thicker paint. It doesn't wanna run, like I said, or go up under it. And that's something I have learned over time. So what I'll do is I'll get the, what have I done with it? Okay, here we go. I'll get that white coming out of the gun. I'll stick it up here, lock it down. Like I said, you can get this stand on Amazon. It's just a large fly tying vise. I get a lot of questions about that too. Um, I've had this thing for, gosh, I've been painting for seven years, so I've had it just about the whole time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the stencil back over. 
Make sure the white's coming out and just put a little bit of white in the middle. Just a little bit. It's hard to get that opaque white to come out with a with low pressure, so you gotta kinda you gotta kinda play with that. What I'm gonna do is let's get this back lined up. Make sure the white's going to come out right without it spider webbing all over everything. And I'm going to put it right here on the back side of this to give it some detail. We'll do the same thing over here. Yeah, we're going to have to put some, I'm going to have to put just some straight um, electric blue on that top as soon as it dries. Get on here. Put a little bit of white on this back. Got it done. Flip this stencil over. Line it up. Get a little bit of white on that middle. Not a lot. Just enough. Okay. So I'm going to clean the gun out. Like I said, this is a this is a cool little bait. I got quite a few likes on this. Like I said, I I think sometimes the the plain baits actually do a lot better than the than some of the more detailed stuff that, that I've done. Like I said, it's I'm gonna turn that pressure up just a little bit for this iridescent. I want to get that a little bit. I'm going to try to spray it straight on in. I think it will. It's thick though. It is a thick paint. just a little bit let that dry clear this gun out yeah that stuff you don't want to really spray that straight on it it was rough I should have reduced it a little bit but it was all right I didn't this bait's really small I haven't used these that much I have used one time and I've caught some fish with it of on a kind of a rust colored crawl I did. I've never fished these transparent little ones yet, but I think they'll be a they'll be a winner. I think they will be a winner. All right. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna turn this and get it up. Let me get it back. We can get these eyes in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this tape off. The, well, I'll let that dry for a minute. It needs to dry. And get these eyes out. We're gonna have to glue these on. These are um, glass eyes. Oops, dumped a bunch of them out that time. They're a yellow gold eye. They're really cool looking. Get a little bit of glue because these are the same exact size. They're, these are a six millimeter, a six millimeter eye. So we will put a little bit of glue on this. Just a dab. Like I said, it's a tiny eye, so it's not gonna need a lot. Gotta have a steady hand, which I don't. Take this eye. Get it on up here. Get it on. Okay. Now if you can see that real well, I'll try to focus in on it so you can see it. 
put it back. It gives it a really neat look. Let that bite just for a second. Like I said, if you like the videos, hit the like button and subscribe. We're really trying to build the channel. I'm actually getting some pretty good support from some of the guys, especially at LureBuild.com, uh, Russ Allen, uh, Whitmore Farm. Uh, I, I deal with a lot of good people uh, that have actually very good products. Go ahead and hit this one. And it's been fun, I tell you. It's, this is a very good hobby that we have. Got very good people in our lure group. Okay. Like I said, if you have any questions, you know, hit me up, good or bad. Like I said, I've just started this, so I'm really new. It's actually a very cool bait. So, like I said, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and got any questions, throw it on down. If not, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.